summary of the law, the first great commandment, we hear at every Sunday Mass, right at the beginning, hear where our Lord Jesus Christ himself said, straight from the horse's mouth, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. You know, uh, the Jews, they, they heard that, and they recited it, actually. They recited it twice a day. Morning prayer and evening prayer. Actually, plus one more time, which was at bedtime. Before they went to bed, they recited it also. You see, there, there was really no disagreement between the Jewish mind and what Jesus said. They agreed. In fact, in another uh, narrative of the Gospel, uh, whoever questioned him said, right, be sure you answered correctly. And yet, they missed the point. They missed the whole point. We can go through the motion, we can recite, we can, we can perform, and yet miss what we are doing it for in the first place. You remember this one rich young ruler who went to Jesus asking him what he should do so that he could inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, Well, you know the commandments, right? Do not steal, do not covet, honor your father and mother, etc. And then this young man said, I have kept all those from my youth up. And Jesus sensed something, and he said, you lack one thing. One major thing. The essence of the commandment. The summary of the commandment. Which is love. So here's what you need to do. Sell all your possessions and give to them. And his face fell, and he was disappointed. But, but we, can, we can go through the motion without fulfilling the essence. You all know the law, what, what is called the love chapter, right? First Corinthians chapter 13. Not in Latin, right? Kumpul sa pag-ibig. Love. Love is patient, love is kind, etc., etc. But it starts with, if I can speak, if I speak in the tongues of men, of angels, but do not have love, I, I, I become a noisy dog on planets. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to be poor, I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. It says something to us. We can do all these things and yet not have love. See, even the the selling of, of possessions and giving to the poor. We can do that, but still not have love. So we can miss the point. It's not just the deed. It's the motive behind the deed. You know, I, I served in a department of the church before called Special Projects Department. And one of our ministries then was uh, ministry to the poor. And I have seen how people fed the poor, gave them provisions, and some loved them, and some treated them like dirt. So it's really not just having a ministry. It's really not just having or giving something, but it's about giving love. Because <clears throat> you can feed the poor. And yet you Treat them as less than human beings. That's not love. I'm sure you've seen on the internet videos of uh, professional, supposed caregivers, caught on camera, mistreating their patients, right? Mostly the elderly. Because it's a job to them. They're supposed to be giving care, but are they giving care? They're supposed to be. <clears throat> Uh, ministering, but are they ministering? Or just fulfilling a duty? The same deed can be a, a civic act or a profession. Or it can be done in love. Then it goes from just duty to ministry. I desire compassion, God said. Not your burnt offerings, not what you go through, 
not the ceremony, not just the, the coming to church, going to mass, the giving. I desire compassion. What is behind those obligations that you perform? I want compassion, not obligation. The first and great law in the kingdom of God, according to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Love the Lord of God. With all of you. Nothing with, with hell. All of you. And your neighbor as yourself. With the same passion as you love yourself. It's the very foundation of the kingdom of God. We hear it right from the king's mouth himself. Again, yet the, the Israelites uh, rejected or, or uh, missed the point. They rejected Jesus as the Messiah. See, at the end of the, the gospel today, Jesus asked the question, which no one was able to answer, but, but he quoted the song where David said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your hand in me. David called the Messiah Lord. In the, in the Jews' mind, the Messiah was the son of David, which should be, who should be like him, a conqueror, a military power. And yet, David bows his military power, bows his, his conquering ability to the Messiah by calling him the Lord. Bowing himself to Jesus' ways. In essence saying, my way is not the way of the kingdom. It's not about military power. It's not brute force. It's love. That's how you conquer the world. It's not nationalistic or political or, or uh, military pride and a view for, for one's own sake, for the sake of Israel's deliverance. It's the meek, humble ways of sacrificial love that Jesus is founding his kingdom on. That's how he reigns. Jesus tells his disciples, you want to, you want to overthrow Rome? Walk with a centurion an extra mile and carry a supper. That's how he used to do that. What? Yeah, not fight? Not, not uh, return force with force? No. You want to subdue the world? Serve it. Serve. You know, Adam's mandate was to rule and reign. By serving. By giving of himself. One word in, in Genesis for cultivate is serve. Cultivate your serve here. That's how you subdue. That's how you rule it. That's how you reign over it. His sin, Adam's sin, was that he turned to himself and he started serving himself. That's what, that's what uh, the cause of the fall was. And the second Adam, the Messiah, Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve. See, Adam was given a magic. He was to be priest and king. Priest, while on the offer and sacrifices of Jesus, loving God, serving him. And king, uh, ruling and reigning uh, over creation, by also serving. So actually the great the, the, the great man is not new. It's just a recalling of the mandate given to man in the first place, in the beginning of creation. Love God first and then the name. Because we, we love God, we cannot help but love our neighbor. He who does not love his brother whom he sees, John says, cannot love God whom he does not see. But I submit this to you. If we have a pure heart, we shall see God. We have a pure God, we have a love for neighbor, we shall see him in them. In the least, the lost, the lonely, the, those who are going astray, those who hate us, those whom we do not like, we will see God in them. 
if our hearts are pure. That's what Jesus said in the Beatitudes. That's why we start at baptism as Christians. We die to the old self. If the old self is out of the way, there only remain God and neighbor to God. Diba? Ano pang mamahari natin sa sarili natin kung kamay na yung sarili natin? Ang may iwan na lang, yung Diyos at ang, at ang uh, neighbor natin para sa halim natin. Kung sana lang, matandaan natin palagi yung, yung kahulugan ng ating pagbabautismo. The death of the old self which was self-centered and the birth of the new self which is other oriented. So we eliminate ourselves so that only God and neighbor can be the object of our love, of our affection. That there will be no room for ulterior motives. Wala na yun. Insa kasi, at tayo natin ganti dito, insa kasi nagmamahal tayo dahil gusto natin may sukli, di ba? Merong return. <clears throat> Bakit ba ang bait natin kay ganito? Kasi gusto natin merong, merong ibabalik. Di ba, ang anak, ipigal ko yun, ang anak maglalambing sa, sa tatay o sa nanay, di ba? Lalapapin, ikis. Ano sasabihin ng tatay o nanay? Anong kailangan mo? Tama? Anong kailangan mo? Bakit lalapapin? Extra loving na kayo, but extra malambing ka rin. Anong kailangan mo? Most of the time, may anong kailangan. Kung walang kailangan, Dadaanan lang yung magulang, mag- uh, di ba? But God, God doesn't need that. God is self-sufficient, doesn't need anything from anyone. And so he's free from that having an ulterior motive. But kita mamahalin para may makura ko sa'yo. So, tulad na sabi ni San Pablo, no? we, we, gave, we gave you a ministry with with, that, with pure hearts. No deceit, no greed, no motive for gain. See, because he said some preach the gospel thinking it's a means of gain, which is the wrong motive. And then he says, actually, you know what? Your heart is pure. Godliness and the gospel is really a means of great gain. Great gain. If if accompanied with contentment, kung content, kung meron ka content, uh, pag-feel content, at may pureness of heart. And then we can love by God who doesn't uh, love for a return, to a favor. And then we, come, we become, we turn from being egomaniacs to hopefully neighbor maniacs. And we do that with all our heart. Call our soul, call our strength, call our mind. What does that mean? That means God and our neighbor get the lion's share of, of ourself, of our time, of our attention, of our treasure, even of what we value. Saint Paul said in, in his letter to the Philippians, regard one another as more important than yourself. Regard them as more important than yourself. That's honestly, that's pretty hard to do. Diba? Ang hirap yun. Ang hirap yun. Kasi kailangan natin matutunan mas mahalin ng iba kasi sa sarili natin. Regard one another as more important than yourself. You know, I, I saw this <clears throat> saying of Gandhi in an in a, uh, Indian bis- business establishment. This is what he said. A customer is the most important visitor on our premises. He's not dependent on us. We are dependent on him. He's not an interruption of our work. He's a purpose of it. <clears throat> He's not an outsider of our business. He is part of it. We're not doing him a favor by serving him. He's doing us a favor by giving us the opportunity to do so. I experienced it then, uh, but it's a, it's a business. Parang ko complain kayo, no? At, ang prato sa inyo, 
store po kayo. Di ba? Punta kayo sa customer service department. Ang trato sa inyo hindi yung service. Minsan ang trato sa inyo, store po naman po. Facebook yung tao eh. During office hours, right? And that, and Gandhi is saying, hey, the reason you have a job is because of the customer. It's part of your business. It's not an interruption. Hindi sa store book. Hindi sa permiso. Hindi sa, I mean, here's the word in the church. We said. But he's the reason you're there. He is the reason. Now, as children of God, we actually have a higher calling than that. Our ours is even a higher calling because we're supposed to not expect profit from our customer. In a business setting, may, may consuelo ka sa ano, sa customer, you know, of profit. But our motive in Christianity should not be, ay, may makukuha kong profit dito. Kailangan ko siyang alagaan. Yet again, yet again, if that's our motive, if that's our attitude, it actually gives us greater gain. Mas malaki ang kita, kumbaga. St. Paul said in his letter today to the, to the Thessalonians, we have had so great an affection for you that we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives. Ibinigay ang buong sarili because you have become dear to us. Well, can we be well pleased? Makakahanap ba tayo ng, ng kasiyahan, ng kagalahan sa pagbibigay ng sarili natin? Siguro hindi pa natin na, na nagagampan na namin sa kabuluan. No? Pero, yun daw eh. Joy is found in giving of self to God and to others. What did Jesus say? This is my commandment. To love one another so that what? So that your joy, so my joy may be in you. And so that your joy may be in you. Kasi, pag binamahal natin ang sarili natin, siguro meron, meron konti joy, may konti pleasure. Pero sandali lang nagsasawa na tayo. Ang gusto ng Panginoon, magkaroon tayo ng, ng kabuuan, ng, ng kasiyahan, ng kaligayahan, ng kanyang, sa, ng kanyang joy. Hindi lang ng, ng, ng ordinary joy, yung sarili ng joy ay makunta daw sa atin. At papaano yung, yung susundin natin, yung sinabi na, na mahalin ang bawat isa. Moses in the Old Testament reading, after serving God for 18 years, imagine 18 years, he could have complained could have said, pambihira naman eh, minit na ang ulo ko ng isang beses, eh, ibibinay mo na ako ng pagpasok ko sa promise na. Papano naman yung walong pong taong kong pagsilbi sa'yo, tulang lana ako, pagsisilbi ko sa'yo. Ako ang nag-alaga dito sa mga Israelita na to. Naging nanay ako sa kanilang, kinarga ko sila, tapos ito, hindi mo ang papapasukin. Pero ang nasa puso niya, di ba rin na, basta makapasok na yung mga inalagaan mo. Okay na sa akin. And true enough, what St. Paul said was fulfilled in Moses. He actually did not lose. He actually had a greater day. He had a front seat to the promised land several years later. Hundreds of years later. He was right in the promised land on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus himself. At kasama pa ni si Elijah, ayun ko, meron silang ano to, popcorn at saka ano, soft drinks while they were there. But they came because he loved his neighbor. And Jesus was asked when he gave that commandment one night, love your neighbor. And who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? It's the Samaritan. Because we're to love indiscriminately. It's our enemies. It's those who hate us. Race, culture, differences in faith, 
different orientations should not be barriers against our love. I'm not saying condone. I'm not saying consenting. I'm not saying agree. I'm saying malin. Kahit sino pa siya, yung Samaritano, yung sa kwento ng Good Samaritan, minahal niya, minahal niya, inalagaan niya, yung tao may hatred sa kanya, may galit sa kanya. Yung tao mali ang trato sa kanya, minahal niya. Because that's what love is. It's a choice. It's not a feeling. Mamaling ka na gusto ko. Eh. It's a choice. Decision. Kahit sino ka pa. Kahit ano pa, kahit ano pang paniwala mo, sabi nyo ng Panginoon ko, mahalin kita. We don't have to agree, we just have to love. This is one uh, uh, piece of news. Uh, it happened in, the, in, in America. Ito yung mga, ano eh, mainit pa rin yung, yung racial issue dyan. Eh. Meron, nag-speech sa isang university na, ano, na white supremacist. Uh, ang sabihin nyo, ang tingin niya sa mga puti, eh, superior race, mas mataas sila kaysa sa mga itin. At meron nagprotesta dahil dun sa, sa speech niya. At dun sa protesta, meron naligaw na isang puti. Obviously, may protesta mga, mga, mga karamihan blacks, so, pero yung mga puti rin na, na simpat, simpatize sa nila. Pero may isang naligaw na naka-t-shirt na may mga, ano eh, mga swastika, yung mga Nazi na na ano na, na emblem na ligaw siya may isang sumuntok sa kanya pero may isang uh, itim na, uh, na, na black man na lumapit sa kanya at niyakap siya niyakap siya at tinanong siya kasi sabi nito ito ang gusto malaman kung bakit bakit ka ba uh, galit na galit sa akin bakit ka ba may buhi sa akin Ano ba yun na iyong kulay ko ba? Yung buho ko ba dahil kulot? Ano ba? Ano ba yung gusto ko pala? At iyakap niya. Tatlong beses ka. Tapos pangatlong beses, yumakap na din doon sa kanya. At, tinan- at, at sinagot yung tanong niya. Alam niyo yung sagot? Hindi ko alam kung bakit. Hindi ko alam. And then, uh, this black guy said, He heard God whisper in his ear, You changed that man to this day. Minsan kasi ganun eh, di ba? Uh, di ba yung um, sa Book of Acts, meron silang uh, uh, demonstration doon, may riot. Tapos hindi, karamihan ng tao hindi alam kung ano yung, ano yung cause nila, ano yung dahilan, bakit sila may riot. Di ba? They were rebels without cause. Meron ang bibigan na ganyan eh. Ang isalit sa mga demonstration, yung panahon ni Nino, yung ni Marcos, Sabi ko, ba't ka sinasali? Ano bang issue? Ewan ko. Ano lang eh. Gusto ko yung makibato ng ano eh, ng bote, tsaka ng bote. Why do you hate so much? Why? Why? But that's not what we should be. We should not be haters, we should be lovers. Why do we have hate so much? Why? You come to think of it. There really is no reason. This is your assignment. Pag uwili nyo. Sipi rin nyo isang tao na hindi nyo gusto. At meron kayong preconceived idea, impression tungkol sa kanya. O paano ba nabuo yun? In the first place, paano ba nabuo? Ano ba talagang nagawa ng tao sa iyo? O dahil nakarinig ka lang ng masama tungkol sa kanya. At nagdevelop na yung hate sa iyo. In this name, pag hindi. Is there really a basis for the hate? Eh, yeah, alam niyo isang gabi, <coughs> sinundo ko yung anak ko, yung nagbigal niyo, sobrang traffic. I didn't want to get on the skyway, pero sobrang traffic sa lupa, skyway yan. Okay. Mga ano na to, kaalas uh, gis na eh. Tapos sa skyway, nakitlata mo. Uh, buti lang, nakatabi ko, no? Tapos, ginuha ko yung gamit, ano? Nakita ko ng, ng jack. Tapos walang ano, walang na uh, wrench. Tapos nagaling wrench. Ha? Yabi. Wala. Ako, paano papalitan ko? Pero doon pliers. Pero yun na puti yung wrench ko. Obviously, may kumuha. No? Anyway. Um, 
So pray ako. Pray ako. Para di na ako nag-pray, tumawag din ako sa mga. Tumawag si Ligan Junior, tumawag ng ilan. Tapos, habang kausap ko si Ligan Junior, kami tumating. Tatlong nila lahat. Hindi mo naman ako. Walang, walang ano. Nakita nila kasi kami ni Elise, nagagano'n gano'n. <laughs> Nagpapara kami sa sakit. Walang pumapara. Siguro, alam mo naman, sa tagal, walang pumapara. Tumigil sila, tapos tinulungan kami. Walang bayad, walang walang ini-expect. At sinabi pa nga nila, okay, ano, okay, hindi ka nakabutan sa kung saan. Kasi sa C5, lalo niya, delikado. Anyway, tinulungan nila. Tapos nila sa akin, bro, bro. No, no, not, nothing expected in the future. Uh, nagtulungan kami, no? Ano lang nga lang kong gamit, eh. Uh, hindi, hindi, hindi na ginamit yung, yung mga gamit ko, eh. Tapos, may tapos, may, may, may bottle water, breaking water pa nila, may bukas pa nila ako. Anyway, I didn't get the names. Malay ko pa nga nila, Michael, Gabriel, Rafael. Diba? 